welcome everybody to our Skype health chat. I'm here with Rachel Curtis. And Hi. she is a former contestant of ABC's Extreme Weight Loss and uh, season one. And I'm so excited to be online with her and kind of just talking about what we uh, want to go ahead and come across um, in both of our journeys and what we're doing to continue everything and every step that we're taking to go ahead and um, continue being healthy because I think that's, that's the key word to be healthy. And we have some questions that uh, some followers and fans of Rachel's have posted on her Facebook page and we want to go ahead and answer them. I will be reading off the question to her she will be answering it from you know her point of view and I'll probably add a little something in there you know that's you know have I've, I've been going through it in the short time that I, I've been doing my changes so first one is how do you get back on track when you have an injury that is an amazing question and that is exactly what I'm going through right now in my life um, for those of you who don't know or don't follow um, 14 months ago I broke my foot and it would not heal so I had a lot of issues with it I had my first surgery and it did not work so I had to have another one um, so I am about two months out from my last surgery and the hardest thing is just learning your limits when it comes to getting back from an injury because for me I'm all or nothing so I've been nothing for so long so as soon as they're like, oh, hey, you can walk a little bit or you can swim, me in my mind, I'm like, yes, gung-ho, let's go towards it. And about two days after I had my first cast off and I started walking, it was just kind of like a, slamming into a brick wall. You have to realize that there are limitations and that you have to learn how to get back into it. Um, don't go crazy because if you do, you wind up hurting yourself even more so. Just learning your limits, and um, for me, the best thing has been physical therapy. I have someone who knows exactly what I'm going through, and he's coaching me and telling me what I can and cannot do, so, yeah. Okay. <laughs> well, I mean, that's... I don't have, per se, an injury. I have kind of like a, like a disability kind mm -hmm. of situation going on in my, in my part. And um, I was going hardcore in the beginning with swimming, and I was doing a lot of cardio and everything. And um, there was so much weight that it caused um, it caused a tear in my abdominal area, and that feels like a sack of fat. And on top of that, the loose skin and all that stuff. So right. um, it's I mean it's been since since the beginning. And it wasn't even the doctor that said it. it was the nurse that I mean you can tell from a nurse that's been probably working all her life she said the only way that this is gonna go away is by you losing weight that's mm -hmm. that was how she said it and I was just like you know what you know I, I that was I guess that was the last thing I wanted to hear at that moment because I was like right. I wasn't even in the mentality that I am now so I was like okay I'll just I'll just go ahead and see what I can do, you know, if I can pop some pills and make it better, hey, let's do it. But uh, but but then at the end, you know, it's 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 been a better results losing the weight. And um, you know, it's just I think I think you have to I we, well, I was talking to uh, Tyler and he was on my previous um, Skype chat and we we were talking I think the one of the first questions that I asked him was, what is the biggest mistake people do either going at the gym or starting like a workout plan? And it's setting unrealistic goals. Yeah. And I thought that was like, I mean, I was, I, I, that wasn't the first time that I heard it. But when you hear it, once you're in a different mindset, I think it, right. you, you, you take it differently. And you're like, you know what? I, yeah. I mean, yeah, I agree. I mean, that's how, that's how it was for me. So, but keep on. You know, you know who you are, and you know who you are who wrote this question. You know, keep on doing what you're doing. I mean, um, I would say um, maybe you can't do so much right now, but keep keep everything, uh, keep the nutrition going. Yeah. You know, and keep eating right. And I mean, I think 
that's how that's how it's worked for me. I mean, I haven't been able to go ahead and run a marathon or half a marathon or whatever <laughs> you want to call it. And I've wanted to because I feel like I have the energy to, but I just I'm not I'm not there right now. So right. Uh, but good question, good question. So we have our second question, and um, it comes from uh, a follower, a fan of Rachel's. And it says, while I wouldn't think about breaking a promise to others, I was breaking promises to myself at all the time. What was the aha moment in your transformation? That is such an important issue. Um, I think one of the hardest things for anyone is being true to yourself and being honest with yourself. Because I went through that all before... um, the show and everything, I would get to a point where I was ready to lose weight and take whatever step I needed. But I had tried so many times before that I was even embarrassed to tell someone, somebody I was starting again, because I just felt like I was letting them down all the time. I was letting myself down. And so you have to get to the point where you start with teeny tiny little promises, whether it be like, I'm only going to have one Diet Coke a day, or I'm only going to do whatever. Start with something very, very small and build up that accountability with yourself. Because being true to yourself and saying you're going to do something and actually following through with it by yourself. I would say that one of my aha moments was, okay, so when you're working out by yourself and you're alone, or even when you're eating, you can tell somebody you did one thing. But when you're alone, you did you do something completely different, right? Perfect. Okay, so for me, I was having a very difficult time with getting on the treadmill and going the distance that I had set for myself. So I would get on the treadmill and I'd be like, okay, I'm going to go four miles. And then I would cut off at like 3.81 and I wouldn't finish that last little bit. And I just kept doing it and kept letting myself down. And there was a day where I was just like, you know what, forget it. I am going to do this. And I remember I got on the treadmill and I just kept going. I went past the point where I promised I was going to go and I just kept going and kept going and I put on an extra like four miles to it. And I just stood there thinking like, (sighs) like I can do this. Like it's possible. You have to just learn how um, to keep promises to yourself. And it's very difficult, but it's like a learning process, you know? And, um, I think the best thing is just to start start off small. Start with little bitty attainable goals. And just like you were talking with um, what your friend, is it Tyler? Yeah, Tyler. Yeah, what Tyler had said. You just have to make it attainable because if you set things too big, um, you're just going to let yourself down and then you'll get into the cycle of, well, I can't do this, I can't do this. You have to build confidence and just go from there. Yeah, that's right. I mean, you're, you're right in everything that you said. My... My aha moment in my transformation uh, was actually recently. And even though I started two years ago exactly, maybe around, yeah, it's already been two years. Um, it was, well, actually, it wasn't recently. The first aha, <laughs> the first aha moment was a picture that my mom took at me at the beach. And I didn't want to take the photo. I told her, I don't want to take photos right now. Um, that's the last thing. I don't want anybody to see me. I mean, you know, and I was in that mindset, you know, even on social media to keeping that same photo that I had, even though that wasn't how I looked, but I was so embarrassed. And, but my mom said, you know what, you probably don't want it right now, but it's going to help you out whenever you've reached, you know, your goal. So, so when I actually started digging up, uh, photos from that time two years ago, and I had recently, this, uh, this year, like in mid-year, I had posted a uh, side-by-side from that photo that she had taken. Yeah. And mm-hmm. I was just like, wow. I mean, I couldn't believe it. I mean, I was just yeah. like, because you, there's, there's like this mind trick. And I think everybody goes through it, and I guess you've gone through it, yeah. that you, you just see yourself constantly and you don't see the change. It's like yep. this. It's like this distraction. It's like this. Uh, this wall that I guess your own eyes do these tricks to you, and you just start seeing like the same person. You're like nothing's happening. There's nothing. Right. There's no transformation here, or something like that. But 
then you remember, like for me, my aha moment at that time to now, uh, I'm just looking at it and I'm just like, wow, you know, and it, and it inspires people and it impacts people, even the ones who knew me personally, you know, they're like, wow, you know, you were that unhealthy, you know, or you, I mean, were you all right? People start worrying and all that stuff, and I'm just like, well, where were you at that time? <laughs> you yeah. Know? But, uh, but, I mean, it was my immediate family that really that helped me out to kind of figure that out. And then recently, my, uh, my aha moment was when I introduced uh, fruits and vegetables. I mean, I'm like, I don't want to say a full-time vegan, but Monday through Friday, I'm a vegan. So wow. it's nothing but raw vegetables and fruit, you know, and um, when I started, when I started consuming that, I kid you not, I started feeling circulation, like even through the tip of my toe, that I hadn't been feeling in a while, when I started drinking the juices, when I started eating that way, and um, it was just kind of like, I mean, I was, I was just shocked, because I was, I mean, I had never felt, I had never felt, or I hadn't felt that in a long time. You know? Right. So it is. It, it's it's motivating. Good. All right. So we'll go to the next one. Uh, it says, "If I have fifty plus pounds to lose, how do I get motivated to exercise?" <laughs> hmm. <laughs> okay. So for me, right now, I have not been able to exercise for over a year, and exercising for me is my favorite thing in this whole entire world. Like, when I began on the show, um, and we were working out so much, I got to the point where that was my, like, go-to. Anytime I would get frustrated, anytime I would get sad, anytime I would get happy, anytime I wanted to celebrate, I ran to the gym. That was my place of, like, solace. Like, I just had to be there. And I think, I know, like you said, with the nutrition and food and stuff, Everyone is different. So my advice to you, whoever asked this question, is find what you enjoy doing. Some people like to dance. Some people like to do Zumba, take hip-hop cardio classes. Some people like to just jog. (laughs) (laughs) Some people like to, you know, do CrossFit. I love CrossFit, but the thing for me that really got me, like, ridiculously motivated was fighting um boxing muay thai jujitsu i got to the point where i was constantly thinking about it it would wake me up in the morning out and get me excited i would go train for two hours and then i would go work two jobs like back to back after training for two hours and then it would still be on my mind so much that after i got off work i would do put in another hour of work just find whatever motivates you and if you can't then just try it like you tried the herbal life it didn't fit you but at least you tried it yeah same goes for the exercising and working out um just try it do one class do one video if you like it then you love it and stick to it if you don't like it then move on to the next thing but you will find that thing you just have to be patient and it'll come to you that's great that's 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 right. I mean, everything. I mean, I, I, I was, I was taking Zumba before all this happened, and because I love to dance. I mean, I love to dance. Yeah. People think it's like weird. I don't know. No, why. it's so fun. You burn <laughs> so many calories. Yeah. It's good. It's like I see all the. I don't know if I don't know if any of you guys who are watching this or or you, Rachel, have seen America's Got Talent this season. No, um, I haven't. But there's like a group of kids that are salsa dancing, and I'm just like. Wow. I mean, it attracts me. I mean, that's like something yeah. that I love seeing because I know that you're getting, they're getting, you know, um, I guess they're starting out knowing that not only is it dancing, but it's it's a healthy way of, you know, moving, you know, in yep. your lifestyle and everything. So um, for me, I was always scared of the scale. I think everybody is. Yeah. <laughs> but I was always scared of getting on that scale. And I, w- I think I even broke one just on purpose because I didn't want it to, I, d- I didn't want to keep weighing myself and, you know, yeah. being accountable to it. Because once you have it, you know, it's like, it's like your accountability partner, you know, you kind of like take yeah. it out whenever you want to 
show them or whatever, but um, it's sometimes for me, when I started putting numbers, like I didn't put any number to lose in the beginning. It was just kind of like, okay, I'm doing this. This is what I'm going to start doing because I didn't have a scale at that time that could actually weigh my weight. Yeah. That's why. So I was like, I know because wait, yeah, I went to the, I went to the doctor and they had to put me in one of those big scales that we see, you know, on the show and all that stuff. Yeah. And it's kind of, it's, it's embarrassing. And, um, but after that I was like, okay, I, I just kept that number in my head and I was like, okay, we'll see how this first month goes. I have an appointment coming up next month and we'll see how much I've lost. And it started coming, you know, the weight started coming down and all that. But uh, to stay motivated and exercising is, like Rachel was saying, do what you love and stick to what you're doing. I mean, I, I'm the kind of person that sticks a lot on routine. I know it's probably not good to have it for a certain amount of time. But, like, let's say if I want to have a period of six months to continue doing the same thing, I, I'm, I'm, I'm like that organized. I can't, yeah. I can't put something new and everything that I'm doing. I'm just saying, <laughs> that we'll just do a, a three-month or a six-month plan, and we'll go from there. You know? Focused. Yeah, focused. <laughs> so somebody asked me, um, I can't remember the exact wording, but it was, how do you get someone motivated in your home um, that you know is overweight, that really doesn't care what they eat, really doesn't care about working out, but they don't have any, like, health issues at the moment, um, which most people, they can use like, hey, you're pre-diabetic, you need to work out, hey, you have whatever, you need to work out. Well, this particular person didn't have anything necessarily wrong with them. And I can relate to that totally because um, with me, I have four brothers and sisters, all of them teeny tiny, all of them perfectly healthy. And I was living in the ho house with them and it was kind of like, how do you, how do you motivate someone? How do you help them see that there is a better way of living and that um, they can't, even though they don't need to lose weight or even if they do need to lose weight, they can feel better about themselves and they can feel better throughout the day. So let's just take my little sister, for example. Okay. Brianna, don't be mad at me. <laughs> so she's teeny tiny and absolutely gorgeous and just a beautiful body, beautiful face, perfect hair, everything. And she eats like crap she might not right now i've moved to arizona so i haven't been around her 24 7 but we used to both eat like crap together and even when i was eating healthy i would look at her food and just be like how do you do that uh -huh. like yeah how do you eat that and you're so tiny and i remember for a while i just looked at her and i was like brianna your legs are amazing but imagine what could happen if you just worked out a little bit and I never tried to force anything on her, but I just invited her to go with me to work out. And it became one of the funnest periods of my life and something that I greatly look forward to because that was our moment to bond and spend time together while we were getting healthier, you know. And I think that for this particular person, in order to motivate your significant other, the best way that I can tell you is to lead by example, which sometimes is the hardest thing in the whole entire world because you're having to like think about someone else and the way they're going to perceive it. And yes, number one, you should work out and eat right for yourself. But in this case, you're doing it for someone else. So I would say, Start cooking new rep recipes like, hey, I want you to try this out, but don't tell them what's in it. Just be like, hey, I tried a new chili when in all actuality is a quinoa chili with like all these amazing ingredients in it and it's actually healthy for them and lower calorie. Just cook them something that is, you know, substitute. tastes good. Yes, a good substitute. There you go. That's the word I was looking for. Yeah. And as far as the working out and stuff goes, um, just start out with something like, hey, will you go for a walk with me? Or, hey, they gave me a free pass to the gym. You want to just go try it out with me? I, will, I would love to take a class with you or whatever. Like, give them some kind of incentive. 
And if they don't take that, then I just say keep living the way you are. And because you can't force anything on anyone. So if your significant other sees the positive effects on you, then they're going to want to feel the same way. So if you can just remain ha having a good attitude and if you can stay positive as difficult as that may be, I promise you it will soon wear off on them. Just don't be forceful. Don't be nagging. Just stay positive and that will create a great atmosphere for that person. And it will also make them feel comfortable enough that when they are ready to change their lifestyle, they'll go straight to you. If you don't force it on them, then they know that whenever they are ready, that you are the one that will be there for them. So just stay positive. I know it's hard, but you'll get there. Yeah, stay positive and be encouraged. Uh, find people like us, you know, I, I would say, you know, that can, you know, you, you can either direct message, you know, you have, you have that, I mean, because she was able to go ahead and do that to you, you know, so that's something that, you know, if you feel more comfortable, just direct messaging and you're not that public person that most, well, probably other people are, I mean, just that, take advantage of it, you know, take advantage yeah. of it. And we're both, we're both here to encourage you and everything that we're doing to better ourselves and continue this journey, right? All right. This next one is, what is an average eating day like for you? Okay, so... Since my last surgery, my husband has been very helpful and very accommodating. So literally every single morning, there is a cooler beside my bed, and it has my Greek yogurt in it, and it has a piece of fruit. So that has become my staple breakfast. Um, I have my Greek yogurt and my fruit because that is the easiest and best thing for me right now. Um, about two or three hours later... I will have some like almonds and maybe another piece of fruit. And then for lunch, um, it just depends. I do a lot of like, um, I love quinoa. I'm like addicted to quinoa. So Costco has like this quinoa and brown rice little baggie that you pop in the microwave for like 90 seconds. And no joke, it is the most amazing thing ever. So normally I'll eat some of that with like some grilled chicken or some turkey or something like that and then some days if I want to splurge or like be bad or whatever I'll have like maybe I don't know some noodles or something with some soup um, but for the most part I stick to um, the grilled chicken and the quinoa but another one of my favorites is um, I take the romaine lettuce and do like some brown mustard and I do deli turkey on it and just roll it up. And that is one of my favorites. Like, I absolutely love that. Um, I do eat a lot of vegetables throughout the day. I try to, like, because I'm a bored eater. Right now I can't work. So <laughs> I'm bored a lot. Same so here. Same here. I am always constantly snacking on, like, broccoli and cauliflower and carrots and stuff like that just to keep me um, out of junk food. But thankfully, um, my husband and I, we live with his parents, and we are, for the most part, a gluten-free household. Um, I do have a lot of food allergies that help as well with the f choices that I make. And then for dinner, we do, um, we always have a vegetable with dinner. We always have, like, salad as an option. And then we have our proteins. We usually do, like, lower-fat proteins. Um, we do a lot of fish, a lot of chicken. Um, we do steaks every now and again, and we do potatoes every now and again. But for the most part, we stick to brown rice and other substitutes as well. Now, when it comes to eating, um, a lot of people look at me. Like, the first thing that comes to their mind when they see me is, oh, my gosh, Rachel's gone off the deep end. She's a fat cow again. All she does is eat. Okay, let me just tell you. I wish that were the case for me. Like, I wish I were eating like a cow and eating the things that I love. Um, right now, my body is just hates me. So <laughs> that's what I tell my husband all the time. I'm like, I don't understand. Like, he and I will eat the same things and we eat clean. And 
I go swimming now, and it's just, just like my weight is not going anywhere. I honestly think I just need the hard workouts that my body is missing. But anyway, that's a side note. Um, one thing I do want to talk about as far as food is make sure you cheat. And that's not a joke. Like, if you completely deprive yourself, you are going to end up like me right after the show. As soon as I was done with the show, this is a very sensitive topic with me because I haven't talked to a lot of people about it. Um, it's been like one of those things I've just kind of kept in. And if anybody I know is dealing with it, I will express, like, tell them my story and stuff. But right after the show, um, I went through a, a bout where I was extremely afraid of food. And I was scared to death to eat. I was scared to death to gain a pound because I didn't want to let anyone down. I didn't want to lose 191 pounds from biggest to smallest and then take advantage of that and gain the weight back or whatever. So I got into a very bad habit of binging and purging. And I struggled with that for about a year or so. And it became like all I ever thought about. And it was because I had deprived myself so much from like sweets and from carbs and stuff that when I finally got a taste of it, like I could not stop myself. I was a maniac and I just kept on, kept on, kept on. And then I would just be like, oh my gosh, what did I just eat? And then I would go purge and I would feel much better about myself. And I was like, oh my gosh, like this is, I'm just going to do this. And so, um, when I realized how unhealthy it was for me, it was a very difficult and low point in my life. But, um, thankfully with the help of friends and family, um, I have been, I guess you could say clean or whatever for the past, like two years, probably. Um, I've had like one episode in between those two years that I've you know, struggled or messed up. But in my eyes, I would much rather gain a little bit of weight than I would live that unhealthy. So if you're going to eat clean, which I suggest you do, because that's good for our bodies, make sure that you don't completely deprive yourself. For instance, all week I've eaten clean. I've done an amazing job this week. And all week I've been craving an ice cream cone. So guess what my husband did for me last night? He went and got me an ice cream cone and I ate it without any guilt, without any like remorse what's whatsoever because I knew that if I did not eat the ice cream cone then that the one chance I got to eat ice cream, I would overindulge and it would be like just terrible. So eat clean, try your best and find whatever works best for you, but make sure you do give yourself a little room for slack every now and again. Yeah, my mom, she made a... I don't know how you would call it. <laughs> it's a banana cornbread with um, nuts. Ooh. And it's it's very it's very it's very good. I mean, uh, she she started making it last year, and um, I was in the week, and I was like, I can't I can't right now. I'm gonna have to save yep. that piece for the weekend. Yeah. And this morning I woke up and I ate that piece. <laughs> <laughs> and I was like, that's good. Yeah, yeah, and it, and it was. I mean, it, of course, it was good. And you know, you're just like, you know what? I, I've done everything that I had to do Monday through Friday in my case, and you know, I'm gonna go ahead and treat myself to this piece of bread. You know, which is, yeah. which is not unhealthy. You know, I mean, there's not. It, it's not. It's not so unhealthy or whatever. It's just. It's something that I like that she makes. So mm -hmm. I wanted to try a piece of it. And my mom, she's. She's a tiny person, so she's. She, if for her, a dessert would be something with like seeds and grains and all that stuff, <laughs> so, a fiber bar or something. You That's know? funny. So yeah. um, you know, it's not really like an ice cream cone like you got, but <laughs> <laughs> but it's all good. The second question to that third part, three part question is, what healthy foods do you always keep on hand for snacks, etc.? You were talking about the Greek yogurt and the fruit. Yes. Yeah. Always. Yeah. Always in the house we have Greek yogurt and fruit because I know that that will satisfy my hunger and it will make me feel much better about what I'm eating and like I always have to have that on hand. Um, what else? 
I do like to have the little, um, every now and again, the special one, like this, is it special K? Yeah. Little bars, you know what I'm talking about? Yeah, yeah. okay. The cereal ones? I'll have, yeah, the cereal mm-hmm. ones, like mm-hmm. the ones with the strawberry or whatever. I'll have those every now and again, but those are like for desperate times. Mm-hmm. Whenever I'm like, it's not time for me to cheat, but I am like needing something because <laughs> I'm craving Extra something. Sweet. Yeah, then I'll eat one of those, yeah. so, yeah. Okay. Well, I just finished up some, I pin, a Georgia peach, of course, and some grapes, and I have a bottle of water here, and um, I do eat almonds, I do eat mm-hmm. almonds, and yeah. um, that's like the only nut that I really eat, that the nut group, uh, the almonds, and um, I used to, I used to eat a lot of yogurt, but then I don't know what happened. I just quit eating it. <laughs> Sometimes when you eat it so much, you just get to the point where you're like, I don't ever want to see another yogurt ever again in my life. Yeah. And, I would, and I would kind of make it like, a, you know, like a parfait, you call it. Yeah. So, mm-hmm. and I would kind of do that with the, with everything that you kind of put in it. And it was good. I even put a, this fiber cereal that I have with like little pieces of fiber, you know, grainy things. Now we sprinkle it on top like sprinkles. <laughs> right. Yeah. And uh, but I mean that was good. It yeah. was good for me. But I, I like to keep a lot of fruit around, especially yeah, if I'm gonna eat too. solids on the weekend. For me, right now I'm eating solids on the weekend. So because I know that that fruit will fill me up and sustain. Yeah. You know. Uh, the third part to that question is: Do you count calories? No. <laughs> <laughs> and the reason why. Um, So when we were on the show, I became like, you get to the point where when you count calories for so long, you know that whenever you look at a certain amount, you know round about how much it is. Um, For me, mentally, it kind of like stresses me out and I become a little too obsessed with the counting calories and I get into the mindset of what I was whenever I was binging and purging. And I get in a very, it puts me back into a dark place. And I know that may sound silly, but for me, counting calories really doesn't help me. Like I know roundabout, like what I consume and I know roundabout, like I still read labels all the time and I still like try to stick within, you know, between 1500 and 1800 a day. But I am not a stickler for every single little bit because I, I don't like living that way. So, okay. I I used to count calories, but now I know what I'm consuming during the week, which is about 1,200 calories a -hmm. day. So um, I don't worry about, you know, during the week. On the weekend, I know that the morning's going to be healthy. It's either going to be an oatmeal or uh, egg whites. Um, And then in the afternoon, it's going to be for lunch. It's going to be either... uh, tuna with salad Mm -hmm. and um my mom she actually taught me how to make this special like it's like this salad you know how you pour that rice into like you know how to make rice fancy that you put in a cup and it comes out like that well i don't know how she does it but uh but I, i figured it out but she mixes the tuna up with pieces of cucumber tomato uh, I guess the right seasoning that you know you put on it, um, salt and pepper or whatever, and you mix it all up and you serve it like that, and then okay. and then you'll have like uh, I think they're the California blend vegetables that have the cauliflower, the broccoli, the carrots, and the steamed steamed vegetable, mm-hmm. and it just tastes so it tastes delicious. I mean you're, yeah. you're like you. I guess you kind of forget that you're eating healthy <laughs> right, at the same yeah. time, you know, and it's not that you should feel guilty because you eat something else, but in my, in my, in my, in my, uh, in my plan, my nutrition plan or my, my, uh, the food that I eat during the week, I mean, I don't, I don't eat during the week. So when I eat on the weekends, I try to make sure to go ahead and enjoy what I'm eating right. and, but not eat too much that will upset my stomach so I can restart Monday again, you know, again and again and again, every single Monday. <laughs> right. But, uh, but yeah, that's, 
That was a good question. I mean, some people have success, and I know there is a calorie counter app or whatever you want to call it, and I would recommend it if it's something Yeah, that... I still have that on my phone. I still use that. Like, if mm -hmm. I'm going to go out to eat, like, I will use it when I go out to eat because yeah. I don't like going in completely blind. <laughs> yeah. I mean, if you're that type of person that is, one, I guess, one of those beginners that um, or are probably introducing this whole calorie counting uh, method and you've you've had success stories either by your friends or somebody that you know or on even on TV and you want to try it out go ahead and you know download one of those apps and start putting down everything that you're eating and you know it'll help you out to kind of discipline yourself I think that's the word yep. to discipline yourself and you'll have a more better idea of how many calories you're intaking uh, and your foods, you know. I agree. I definitely agree that beginners should start out counting calories because you need to know where you're starting out at and you need to know your goal, like what portions and what is good for you. So, yeah, I agree. Beginners should yeah. count calories or at least try to. Yeah, at least try to. I mean, even if it's just like a, a, a rounded out calorie yeah. amount, you know, <laughs> rounded out. Yeah, I agree. <laughs> you know. Okay, so we're going to go on to our next question here. I feel like my shirt's like going like trying to expose <laughs> something. No, you're good. You're good. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Uh, the next question is, Ray Rachel, when you're ready to make changes in your life, what is the best, easiest way to start? What is the best that. and the easiest way? Okay. Either or. So that is what I'm going through now. And um, first of all, let me just start off by saying that the first time that I lost all my weight, um, I honestly... Like, after I got over the whole binging and purging, and I started getting my head right, and I started maintaining, and I started actually being very, very healthy like I was on the show, um, I never thought I would ever gain the weight back. And I just knew in my heart that that was how I was supposed to always be. And I had worked so hard to get there that I just knew it would never be taken away from me. And this is very, like, fresh and anew. Um, you know how earlier we were talking about you have a blinder on to where you don't really see the changes in your body and in your life and stuff. Well, um, that happened to me on the flip side as far as gaining weight. Um, I was gaining 20 to 30 pounds a month um, due to my thyroid and um, I have some other health issues, hormone issues and stuff, plus not being able to work out because of my foot. And I remember I was already up like 120 pounds and I looked in the mirror and I still saw the skinny Rachel. Like I still saw all the skinny me and who I was in the beginning. So it has just now hit me that I am pretty much back to where I was when I started on the show. And I am starting all over again. And that is the most, <laughs> for me, like depressing <laughs> and hardest thing to really you know think about because it it was so hard doing it the first time that now I'm having to do it again and I think the best and the easiest way for me to start over again is to um I'm about to get super emotional about this one um rely on others you know um I saw a video of you you put accountability on your yeah. YouTube page and that's the best thing. Yeah. And it really you, is because, yeah. because um I know for me I was so nervous the first time I posted a picture of me gaining weight especially on my fan page because I was like what are they going to think of me? Are they going to judge me? Are they going to think I just went off the deep end and that I wasn't grateful for my opportunity or whatever. I was just so worried about what other people would think that I just kind of hid myself away. And now I am just relying on others to just, there are some loving people and almost every single one of my fans out there, like I know that if I truly needed encouragement, I could message any one of them and they would just be like, Oh my gosh. Da, 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 da. So I think the best thing when you're starting over is to find that person and for me right now, it's my husband. He is my accountability partner. He is my encourager. He is my, oh my gosh, he's the greatest thing ever. Like, he's just been exactly what I needed to go through what I've been through. And the Lord knew 
that I would be struggling and he knew that I would be going through a hard time. And so he sent, sent me a sweet and beautiful person to just love me through it all. So just find someone that truly can um, keep you accountable and can sympathize with you. So, I mean, if you don't have anybody in your day-to-day -day life, Joel, he's been through it. And, you know, he could give you some encouragement. And then me as well. Just send a message and, you know, we'll get to you and we'll get it figured out. So just find that one person for you. Definitely. And if you already have that one person, <laughs> find another person. No, just kidding. <laughs> the next question that we have is... Uh, starts out by saying, I have over a hundred pounds to lose and I just can't stay motivated. How do you find the motivation? This is a great question. So I have over a hundred pounds to lose again. And I think that the biggest motivation for me is my future family. Like you were talking about with the kids, Joel, you really want to be a father. I really want to be a mother, and I know that um, with some of the health issues that I have and some of the diseases that I have, with me having this extra weight on and stuff, it is going to make it very hard for me to be able to even get pregnant, you know, and that's something that I really want. So a motivation for me is losing the weight is to have a family, have a future. Like I want to be able to go to the gym wearing, you know, tank tops and stuff and not be worried about my big arms hanging out and loving yourself now is going to be the key to keeping that motivation you have to be able to look in the mirror and be like all right i love this fat and i love me enough that i'm going to change it you know you have to change the negative comments in your head that you hear them daily like i'm too fat i'm too up i'm too this i'm too that negativity is not going to be a good motivating factor you need to tell yourself that you are good enough and that you are worth it. And if you keep telling yourself that, I promise you, you will soon start believing it. So try to practice positive thinking and um, positive talking to yourself, which I know sounds really weird. But do that, and I promise you it will help you stay motivated. And if you none of those work for you, you just have to find it in yourself. Like for me, when I first started out, I was already like super motivated and ready to do this before I actually got picked for the show because there was a moment where I got by myself and I sat there and I just thought about how miserable I was and I thought about all the good things that could come and that I wanted and I just wrote my heart out like I poured my heart out onto paper and I looked at it and I was like all right this is like my starting point and I wrote down the date and the time and I was like there's no looking back there's no turning back so sometimes just getting alone and getting by yourself is is what you need to get that motivation started and going again I'm at that point that uh, I don't I, I don't want to say too much because I'm in a learning process and right. that's and that's fine, you know. That's fine, you know. Being able to kind of learn every single day um, something new, and right. I'm not an expert in anything that I've been kind of saying. I, I don't. I'm. I'm not saying that I have the correct answer. This is what's worked for me, right? And yeah. this is what's worked for Rachel as well. So, taking consideration everything that we've been saying today, and um, the last question that we're going to talk about is kind of like one of those things that we kind of avoided, which is the scale. Uh, I always avoided it, but I finally bought one and I'm, and I have it standing near my, uh, my toilet seat. <laughs> and, um, it says, should we trust the scale or inch loss? No, should we trust the scale or inch loss? Sometimes I'm getting depressed because of that. So should we trust it? No. <laughs> Honestly, you are not defined by a number on the scale. You are not defined by the inches around your waist. You are not defined by um, the pounds you need to lose. You need to learn that 
This is your body. And you are who you are. You know the areas that you need to better yourself in. You know the things that you need to quit in your life, the things you need to change. And if you were to only base it off of the scale and inches lost, then what are you really succeeding in? You know, like, you're if you change the number on the scale, but you don't necessarily change who you are or the way you live your lifestyle, then what, you know, like, it's not really going to help you. Yes, you may look better and you may look smaller, but you're not dealing with those issues that got you there in the first place. Um, so... Me, I have not stepped on the scale. Like, I stepped on the scale when I went to the doctor about, like, three weeks ago. And that was the first time I stepped on the scale in over two months because I got to the point where I was weighing myself three times a day because I was so consumed with that number on the scale. And I remember, like, any time I would see it go up, it would change my whole entire day and I would be depressed and I would eat worse because I'd be like, well, I'm already up a pound. I might as well enjoy the day by eating myself to another pound or whatever. And if I saw like a pound down, then I was just like, you know, we should not live our lives based on a number on a scale. We should not let a number create our mood or tell us how we should feel. We should tell ourselves how we feel. And then if you feel like you're up to stepping on the scale, then you base your own mood before you even step on the scale. Like, you need to tell yourself, like, hey, I'm happy with who I am, no matter what this number says. And if you have a loss, then you have a loss. If you don't, then, oh, well, tomorrow's a new day. Like, just be happy with yourself. And if you're not happy, then change. And do not allow that number or those numbers of inches to really dictate how you're feeling or what you're doing if it's if it's right or if it's wrong and yeah I mean you know that if you're 600 pounds you obviously need to get that number down but it still should not define who you are so for me I don't listen to a number on a scale because if I did especially in the situation I'm in right now I would be depressed every single day instead I wake up thankful that I'm alive and knowing that tomorrow is a new day and that today I can better myself for today and yeah forget the skill just go off how you feel yeah you're right uh, for me in scale using the scale it was because I hadn't weighed myself I think in so many months <laughs> yeah that when I finally found the one that I could actually weigh myself on it was of kind of like help for me to focus Right. And um, that's what it helped me out. And when I got to, I got down to the number of actually being able to buy any type of scale. That's when it got even more. Uh, I, I got even more motivated because I'm like, wow, I don't, right. I don't yeah. need a special scale anymore. I can buy a regular right. scale and weigh myself on it. And um, but yeah, don't don't get depressed. I know it's different for girls, and I know it's different for guys, um, because you know girls are more kind of like. You know, oh my God! You know, two pounds. Two pounds is nothing. It's kind of just water weight. You know, yeah. it's it's probably just water weight. And don't 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 tie yourself, you know, in that whole mentality of, you know, just focusing on that. Just focus that right. you're actually feeling better. You know, if you had to, if you used to have a, a back pain or if you used to have like I don't know a bunch of leg cramps or something and. You don't now. It's, you're doing something good. You know, you're, right. you, the way that you're eating and you're, you're just exercising and all that stuff, it's making you feel better. So yeah. as, as long as you feel better, you know, the, the changes will come and people will start noticing. And I think that's, that's where uh, most of this whole process comes in. You know, I think everybody who posted a question, these questions, not only do they focus you on what you're doing, um, you know, to everybody out there, but it focuses us, you know, we kind of have to, you know, think about these questions, we kind of run them through our head and be like, okay, well, right. this is what, you know, where's my mind at, yeah, where's my mind at, and this is what people yeah. are actually constantly thinking about, you know, yep. every single day in their weight loss journey, so, uh, be encouraged, guys, be, be motivated and everything, I mean, th the questions don't end here, if you have more, keep posting them on her site, yep. 
or, or send me a message. Uh, I'm on Instagram. I'm really more active on Instagram than Facebook nowadays. Um, just because more people are kind of focused. I mean, seeing my Instagram more than Facebook right. anymore. And, right. uh but uh yeah joe all the all our information will be down in the description below you can find us there you can follow us you can add us you can do whatever you want just don't stalk us because we don't like stalkers <laughs> i don't think i don't think rachel's husband would be kind of you know approving of that but um, no. and i didn't even formally congratulate you rachel on, oh, your, on your marriage uh i'm you. so happy for you i'm happy that you Me found too. that person you know in your life Me and too. You know, it motivates me to be able to go ahead and find that person that is waiting for me. Uh, I, I'm thinking on the other side of the world, but who knows? It's probably... You, like <laughs> you never, I'm telling you, you never know. Yeah. I never in a million years thought that I would be married to the man I'm married to or that we would have met the way we met or anything. Or uh -huh. It's just, you just have to go with the flow and just love yourself and love others and just be present in the moment and then next thing you know you look over and you're like oh hey there you are i've been waiting for you for a long time and how did this get yeah. here i know yeah so yeah Yay. that's great that's great well thank yep. you so much and um i hope you guys have found this video to be very informative and share it to your friends and you know keep keep doing what you're doing to continue this and i hope this is not the last time that we chat hopefully we can have a success story next time you know on each and every single you know situation that we're going through yeah and uh continue you know encouraging others and that's what we want to do we want to encourage you and by the way that we encourage you we're we're being encouraged as well to continue what we're doing so yep. it, it helps both ways yep Yay. all right so thank you guys so much and you guys have an awesome weekend uh, rest of it. I don't even know when I'm posting this. <laughs> you just have a wonderful day. <laughs> <laughs> have a wonderful day.